welcome to Greater Valley Assembly of God. How many are glad to be in the house? Wow, let me try that one more time. How many are glad to be in the house? Hallelujah. How many have had a chance to meet Daniel already? Yes. If you haven't met Daniel yet, you'll have that opportunity. But in a, in, in a few moments, we are going to be hearing directly from him. But until we do, I don't want you just to have Daniel meet with you. I'd like to have the Lord meet with you today. I'd like to have you engage with the Holy Spirit. We are so glad to have you here. If you're watching online, we welcome you. But if you are able to stand, would you stand all around this room as we begin to worship the Lord and praise Him for all that He's done. How many are grateful for who God is? And how many are grateful for what he's done? It's neither one or the other. It's, also, it's always who he is and what he's done. Father, today we praise you today. We honor you, Lord, because of who you are. But because of who you are, Lord, we are blessed today with benefits. And we say thank you today. Father, I pray that on this special day that you will allow the presence of the Holy Spirit to be so real to our lives. Lord, I pray that we'll not wait till the second or third song to start worshiping you, but Lord, from the very first breath we take for our singing today, Lord, we will be in the throne room worshiping you. Lord, we love you today. We appreciate the breath you've given us. In Jesus' mighty name, can somebody shout amen? Amen. amen. The Bible says if you have breath, then you need to be praising the Lord. Is there anybody here this morning who's breathing? If you're breathing this morning, then someone shout praise the Lord. Would you take a moment, greet two or three people around you, someone you didn't come with, introduce yourself today, and God bless you in the house. Dear my God bless you today.
of addiction.
Lord God, that we praise you no matter what is going on. God, and then we sung about your miracle power, but Lord, would you be our firm foundation this morning, Lord God, as we go through storms and we go through battles, Lord God, we don't want to be built on the sand. Lord, it's hard to surrender as humans. It's hard to give over control, but Lord, I believe we haven't been able to do a whole lot with the control ourselves. Would you give us the faith this morning to turn over our hearts to you? Lord God, to sing by faith that you are our firm foundation this morning. going on in our family, Lord God. You are the God of the impossible. The demons tremble at your voice. Yeah, I'm gonna make it 
morning as they go into that bridge. Pa uh, Jeremiah, would you come here one more time? Why don't you notice the words of this bridge? Put those on the screen, if you will, the words of the bridge. It says this. The bridge uh, next down, if you, Victor, if you will. With my life laid down, I'm what? Surrendered now. Now, most of you guys know Jeremiah. How many know Jeremiah's a good guy? Jeremiah, come here. But listen, we don't need to clap. He's not that good. Now listen. If, if he, if, huge hypothetical here. If he got in trouble with the law, and all of a sudden, law enforcement caught up to him, what would they say? Surrender. And what would be the universal sign of surrender for him? Surrender. You, know, you don't put him back down. And then they might say, get down on your knees. Now, I want you to think about this spiritual image. This is how we are to live before the Lord. Why? Because he's been so good. There's nobody else that has died on a cross to take away your sins except for Jesus. I understand we praise him on a daily basis. We praise him Sunday mornings. But can we ever get tired of praising God for what he has provided for us? What he's provided for us is not just eternal life, but he's provided for us peace joy on a daily basis if you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow can i encourage you you do not need to worry why because you have a god who loves you who's following after you with goodness that line some of us may have a tough time singing your goodness is running after me but i want you to know it's biblical david said what in psalm 23 surely goodness and mercy shall what follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever some of you've heard me say this before but it, it's not that one day I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord, but the present tense, or the whatever that tense is of grammar, it's, keep your hands up. All right, now listen. Now, now, kneel down, keep your hands up. All right, now listen. It is this. It is I am currently dwelling in the house of the Lord. Listen, I am currently dwelling in the house of the Lord. Understand, spiritually speaking, you are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. You're currently dwelling in the house of the Lord, and I'm going to be there for how long? How long? Someone shout, how long? Forever. Would you turn to somebody and say, you're going to be there forever. God bless you. Thank you. Get up now. God bless you guys. You may be seated in this place today. Thank you for worshiping with us. Hallelujah. How many love the Lord here this morning? Hallelujah. If you don't love the Lord just yet, we will be praying that one day it will come. Because there's no greater joy on this world than to know that God is with you and you are with God. Friday night at Prayer and Praise, we were talking about uh, joy in the context of the Gospel of John. And we mentioned that that when John talks about joy, or, well, really, when Jesus talked about joy, it was in the upper room. And he was doing that within the context of serving. And when we serve Jesus, I'm telling you, there's no greater joy than to know that you've been used by God. Well, this morning is a special Sunday. We have uh, Daniel with us today, uh, a.k.a. Walter Smith, but we're going to call him Daniel. You may have seen him already walking around. Uh, You're going to be blessed in a few moments, but we want to receive our morning tithes and offering, and then we're going to share a few announcements with you, and then we are going to jump right into it. Now, let me say to the children, three to six years old, you are having class today, seven years old and on up. Uh, we're going to keep you here. Now, if you're 7 to 12, don't be disappointed because even though Children's Church may be a blast, it's going to be it's going to be even gooder in here today, all right? So you're going to have a great time here today. But we want to just ask the Lord's blessing uh, upon the offering today. So, uh, Father, we come before you, Lord. We just pray for your blessing upon those who are able to give, Lord. We thank you that you are our provider. And, Father, I pray that you just allow us to be blessed. Lord, and let this church be able to use your finances, Lord, your finances, Lord, for the furtherment of your kingdom. We honor you today in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout amen. 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 Just a few announcements, and then we will get into the other stuff going on today. Ladies, any ladies here that love the Lord? Ladies, uh, Mother's Day is coming, and whether you're a biological mother or not, we honor you for being a woman of God. But uh, Saturday, May 11th, Dr. Amy Carpenter. Now, she is Dr. Amy Carpenter, and some of you are aware that she was one of my classmates, one of my youth group mates in school. 
uh, and, and when I was a teenager, and uh, she was the valedictorian of our class, and I was looking at our yearbook here a month or so ago from high school, and it said most likely to succeed, and under it, it had her picture, Amy, and uh, she has gone, uh, gone on to do great things. She and her husband passed her in Maine, but she's going to be coming down sharing on Mother's Day with us, but she's also going to be having a special evening on Saturday, May 11th. You'll be blessed by that. Also, uh, let me just uh, pull out my announcements here. Uh, Pastor Josiah, where are you? Come on up at this time, if you will. Uh, we have a special video that we're going to share with you concerning Blue Sunday. Now, you may not be aware of what Blue Sunday is because I was not aware of what Blue Sunday is. But Lisa Bailey, our community outreach coordinator, has let us know what Blue Sunday is. And she's going to let us right now with a special video. Go ahead, Victor, if you will. Hey, everyone. It's me. I've got a few seconds before Pastor Chris cuts me off, so listen up, okay? Sunday, April 28th, I'm giving you plenty of notice. It's National Blue Sunday Day of Prayer for Abused Children. It's called Blue Sunday. It's a day to pray for children and the people who help them. We are very fortunate in Bradford County. We have an organization called the Children's House Child Advocacy Center. It's right down in Tawanda. It's the Children's House Child Advocacy Center. Okay? We will have information about them available that day, but I'm telling you they are amazing and they need our prayer. So what can you do on Sunday, April 28th? We need you to wear blue. Before each service, we're going to take a group selfie and we're going to send it to them to let them know that they are in our prayers. So remember to wear blue. We'll also be selling blue pins at the door. Um, so all of that donation money will go straight to that organization. So remember to bring money for that donation. Also, you can make a donation through the offering. Just remember to put on the note that it's for Blue Sunday and that will go straight to that organization. And lastly, pray. Pray for the children. Pray for the people that help the children. So wear blue. Um, we'll be selling the blue pins. And remember to pray. Thank you, everybody. Hope you have a great day. And now back to Pastor Chris. Thank you, Lisa Bailey. Just a reminder, tonight, 530, ladies Zoom prayer meeting. Wednesday night, Tuesday night, Hope for Healing with Helen, 630. Wednesday night, Bible study. Pastor Josiah is going to be sharing this coming Wednesday night. Thursday night, youth group. Uh, also, the Ladies Fearless Bible Study taking place Thursday at 6. We encourage you to come on out to that. A week from tonight, Sunday night, is the Marriage Matters class. And Pastor Josiah, would you let you know, let the church know what's going on with you? Absolutely. Uh, a couple things. Uh, first of all, youth camp. Uh, I just want to say uh, it amazed me this year that youth camp sold out ridiculously fast for the week that we went. Uh, we're planning on going, and I was only able to get slots for six students for that week. Uh, so we're taking a very small group. Uh, there were a few people that were on my list that actually I'm, I'm I, I have more people on my list than I have slots for. So if you already talked to me about youth camp, come talk to me. The first six people have first choice on that. But what I am doing, this is the first year they added an extra weekend camp. So there's a week of camp, there's a weekend camp, there's another week of camp, and then there's another weekend camp. The weekend camp is a day shorter. I am strongly considering the possibility of taking two groups to youth camp, one on the weekend and one for the week, if there's enough interest. Uh, so if you're interested in youth camp and uh, you weren't able to make it into that first round of the full week, uh, talk to me. I'm not going to take a group down I'm not going to make the extra trip unless there's people that are interested um, and there's only about a hundred slots left for that weekend camp uh, so I need to know that as soon as possible but with all of that with the cost of going to youth camp and transportation and registration for all of that uh, I know it can be a big cost for some of the families that are going and so what we're going to be doing we're actually going to be having a youth fundraiser uh, on Saturday May 18th we're going to be having a spaghetti dinner fundraiser right over here in the gym we're also going to be having a, a Chinese auction at that to help support the youth to cover transportation costs all the other costs that go along with camp and then anything that's excess and that's going to go to help towards uh, students that maybe need a little bit of extra funds to be able to cover the registration cost um, for the week of camp uh, so I'm looking forward to that so I just want you guys to put that on your calendar come on out have some spaghetti get some cool stuff and uh, and uh, have fun it'll just be a great night of fellowship and the, this, the kids will be serving um, so it's a great opportunity. We always have a good time of, of, of just getting the, the teenagers together and teaching them how to work in a kitchen, which is fun. Um, 
But nevertheless, I wanted to say all of that. Uh, so th those are my primary announcements for those. Teenagers, if there's any teenagers here that haven't come to Youth at the River on Thursday nights, I just want to encourage you, come out to Youth Nights on Thursdays. We have a great time. Love to have you. Uh, sixth through twelfth grade, come on out. Uh, at, we meet every Thursday right over here in the River Building. Um, and then I had one other quick thing I wanted to share with you guys, but I made a little video for that. Uh, so I'll let the, the, the team run that whenever it's ready. So. Hey church, Pastor Josiah here. Just wanted to talk to you real quick about the upcoming Eagle Run that's happening this Saturday in Tawanda. It's a fundraiser for Grace Christian Academy. What is Grace Christian Academy? It's a parent-owned and operated school that is independent and focused on giving children a biblical godly education right here in the valley. It is a fantastic school. We've had many people from our church that, that have children that attend Grace Christian Academy. My boys all attend Grace Christian Academy, and uh, I'm so grateful for that school and the teachers there. Um, but as an independent school, they, their operating budget does not come from government funding, and their tuition is much lower than many private schools. And so in order to keep their operate, keep their doors open and keep their operating costs low, many of the teachers and administrators work on very low salaries, but even that is not enough. Some of their biggest ways of keeping the doors open are fundraisers like this Eagle Run. Uh, and so if you'd like to support this ministry, Grace Christian Academy, and giving great education to our students here in the Valley, then I'd encourage you to come on out Saturday morning for the Eagle Run. It's going to be held at Independent Baptist Church in Tawanda. Um, if you're not a runner, don't worry. Um, there's plenty of other ways to support the school here at the Eagle Run. They're going to be having a bake sale. They're going to be having chicken barbecue. They're going to be having a silent auction and a Chinese auction as well. And there's many other ways to just come on out and support the school. I'm so grateful for this school and the teachers that have poured into my children. And uh, so if you're free on Saturday morning, come on out to the Eagle Run. Take care. Take care to do that if you would. All right, children, three to six years old, head on out to Children's Church. Uh, yes, what, what am I missing? Lisa. Uh, the Navy prayer discussion is tonight at 6 o'clock instead of 530. Okay, the prayer meeting? Yeah. S six o'clock tonight, Zoom prayer meeting, 6 o'clock instead of 530. Okay, three to six years old, right? No, wait. It's at six. It's at six. Six o'clock tonight. So... Three to six years old, head on out to Children's Church. The rest of you get prepared. Last night, men, we had a great time. We had 60 or so men, uh, approximately 60 people out for the men's night last night. Uh, if, if you were here last night, would you stand all around this room? Go ahead, stand, man. Don't, don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Look at this. How many are glad that you got this many men in our area that love the Lord? That's exciting. So I celebrate you guys. You may be seated. Celebrate you guys for being out. I commend you. But last night we had a great time. Pastor Walt Smith shared with us, and we were blessed. Now, who is Pastor Walt Smith? Pastor Walt Smith originally hails from Pennsylvania, central Pennsylvania. But uh, I first met him at my brother and sister-in-law's, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law's church. Uh, a year and a half ago, I was down sharing in Marlow, West Virginia. After the service, a guy came up to me, handed me a brochure, and just said, Hey, I'm Walt Smith. And you could tell that he was just a man who loved people and loved the Lord. So I talked to my brother-in-law, and he said, No, he is good. He's good. So uh, I invited him here, and I asked him last night, I said, Pastor Walt, I said, What you do, what, what you do, what do you call it? I, and, and the best way we could probably describe it is a theatrical monologue that deals with biblical characters. So without further ado, I'm going to ask you to give a Greater Valley Assembly of God welcome to Walter Smith, and we are going to show a video. Would you give a welcome?
Prophet Daniel's public life was one of purity. His private life was one of prayer. Ten suddenly wicked and deceitful men made it against the law to pray to anyone but the king. Yet Daniel kept on praying. Surprisingly, the Lord shows up to rescue Daniel, and... Well, here is a brief look at the prophet Daniel and the lion in Daniel's den. Within a few years of Nebuchadnezzar's death, a massive army approaches Babylon. Led by Cyrus, king of Persia. Let them know we've arrived. Babylonians know they don't stand a chance. They let Cyrus in. What do you do when you live in an ungodly culture? What do you do when they have taken you as, as slaves and have made and forced themselves upon you? Some people say that you give in to the culture and you give in to, to what they want to do to you. How can you live in an ungodly culture and still have your Jewish faith? Or for you being followers of Christ, how do you do that? And so you are here today to ask me, Daniel, how I did that. Well, I will tell you I did it because of who he is. Jehovah, Elohim, the great I am, and he is ruler over all. Some say you cannot do both, that you either give up one or you join the other. You live in a cave or a bubble. I think you say bubble, but we say bubble. You live isolated or you give in to the crowd. You see, when I was just a young boy, a vast Babylonian army came in and took us as young men from Jerusalem where we lived, and took us to Babylon. Our king, Jehoiakim, was sinning and was not following after God. We, we were denying what God could do. We were coming short of his glory. And so because of that sin, God placed judgment upon us in Judah and especially in Jerusalem. We were taken away. The chief of staff for King Nebuchadnezzar, his name was Ashpenaz. Oh, you read that in my book, Daniel chapter 1. How many know I have a book? Have you bought my book? Do you read my book? Oh, it's there with about 65 others, I believe, but it's a good book. And in chapter one is Ashpenaz is the chief of staff for King Nebuchadnezzar. And he came in and he took all of the intelligent, smart, good looking young men to take them and place them in the service of King Nebuchadnezzar. Intelligent, handsome, kind of like who you're looking at today. But I was much younger then. We were forced as slaves into the king's court. We were told that we had to do different things and we were going to have to forsake our Jewish faith and all of our culture and everything that we had been taught from just little boy up. But I, Daniel, would not do so, nor would my three friends, and you know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But do you know that is not their Hebrew name? That was their Babylonian name. Oh, you haven't read my book. It's in there, Daniel chapter 1. 
I think it's verse 6, 7, or 8. I just, we didn't have chapters and verses when I wrote that. But the Hebrew names were Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah. And mine was Daniel, but they tried to change our names. And that's the first thing that an ungodly pagan culture will try to do to you. They'll try to change who you are. Try to change your name. My name was Daniel, or Daniel, and that L means Jehovah, referring to God, Yahweh. But Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah had their names changed to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Here's what their names meant, if you will. Hananiah meant, God is gracious. But Nebuchadnezzar and the ungodly Babylonians tried to change it to Shadrach. That meant, I am afraid of God. Michel, or Michel, says, I know who God is. That's what his name meant. But it was changed to Meshach that says, I am nothing. I am destitute. I am just despised. And then Azariah that says, God has helped, was changed to Abednego. I am just a slave. And my name was changed from Daniel that meant, God is my king. God is my Lord. To Belteshazzar. That means, means I am just a servant to the king. That she protects the king. Let me tell you, I am not a she. Each one of those boys' names were changed to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they were a fem feminine gender. And I am here to tell you that I am not a woman. And there's nothing wrong with woman because God has created male and female in his likeness and in his image. But I am not a female. I am Daniel. I am the son of my father. I know who I am. And they tried to change me by changing my name. I hear that the same thing is happening in your world, in your country, in your nation that people are trying to change their genders. I hear that they are trying to, to, to uh, uh, do certain things to young boys and girls and change them from boy to being girl or girl to being boy. That's nothing new under the sun. Do you know that? Us pagans in the Babylonian and the Persian empires did the same thing. Maybe slightly different, but they tried to emasculate us. I'm here today to tell you, do not let your world and the things of this world change who God has called you. I'm not talking about your surname, what your birth name was. But I'm here to tell you, gentlemen, you are sons of the Most High God. And all the women said, Amen. Amen. You are sons. Nothing else. God loves you. And ladies, you are the daughters of the Most High God. You are the righteousness of God. And if you believe in Jesus today, how many believe in Jesus? If you believe in Jesus, you are the righteousness of God, the right standing of God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus was not on the scene when I was born, but he is Messiah. He is king. Look at those precious girls. They've got their hands up. They know who they are. They're princesses under the eyes of God. And our young men here are princes under the eyes of God. You're the redeemed of the Lord. You're sanctified of God. Do not let your culture change you. Do not let them try to reprogram you. Babylon tried to reprogram us and tell us what was right in our eyes is now wrong and what was wrong is now right. They tried to change what we ate. They, Ashpenaz, the chief of staff, tried to give us king's food and I said, oh, no, 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 no. Give us 10 days. Test us for 10 days and see if we eating vegetables and fruit and our diet from 
our Jewish homeland. See what our countenance looks like after 10 days. Ashpenaz was horrified. He says, oh, I will lose my life if I let you do something like that. The king won't be pleased. I said, just test it for 10 days and see if it's different. And do you know what? It was different. Our countenance shined. We looked as handsome as some of the men here today. Some, okay. <laughs> and we had found favor then with King and with his chief of staff. But oh, what joy. You say, how did you do that? How do you live in, an, in a corrupt culture? How do you live in a culture that is pagan, that does not know love God and does not believe in Jehovah? How do you do that? You do that, Daniel, well, I will tell you. I went into my room and I prayed. I opened the windows. Windows that looked out toward Jerusalem. That I had long, long had left and been exiled from. And I longed to go back as, as, as when I was a little boy. My memories were beginning to fade because I'm an 80-year-old man. But I opened and I prayed and I said, God, Give me wisdom. Give me discernment, God. God, give me enlightenment and revelation. I did that several times a day, and I'd close my windows back. Soon, after I had interpreted one of King Nebuchadnezzar's dreams, and in that dream, and he, he, he could not figure it out, and the other wise counsels couldn't, he, he was going to eradicate all of us. But God had revealed to me what the dream was about, and it was about King Nebuchadnezzar and his kingdom would not last. Would not last because of what he was doing. He made an idol of, uh, to, to bow and worship, and my, my fellow brothers, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, would not bow down. And in essence, what did they do to them? They put them in a fiery furnace. But they were not burned up. In fact, some of the men that put him in there, they were burned up, but not the three boys. And then, then the king looks in the fire and he says, well, I see four men. Didn't we put three men in there? And the fourth one looks like the son of Jehovah. Wow. That was amazing to me. But in one night, Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom was turned around. And you saw on, on this what are these? These are picture boxes? You, you saw it earlier. I've never seen such a thing, but you saw Cyrus coming in and taking over Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. And now the Persians were ruling over Babylon and all the region. And it was Cyrus who appointed Darius, the king, over the city of Babylon. And now we were subject to a new king. But again, I had found favor with Nebuchadnezzar and I was finding favor with Darius, not because of who I was or what I did, but because of what God had done in our lives and because he was revealing still to us, even as slaves in a pagan culture, he still was speaking to us and others could notice that. And Darius noticed in us, and he elevated us to the second place in the kingdom. But there were some men who really were tricksters and connivers and, and evil men. And they made King Darius sign a decree that if anybody would pray to anybody but the king or the Persian god, the leader, that we would be killed. I, I did not stop what I was doing. I continued to pray several times a day. In fact, you again, you'll read it in my book in Daniel chapter 6 this time. It says that I did not deviate from what I had always done. I always did it. But the, but the Babylonians, these new Persian leaders, they had, they had a pit with lions that if you disobeyed what the king had said, they would throw you in this pit of hungry lions. Oh my, that is not a good thought at all, is it? Hmm? 
It's a scary thought. But I was not going to change praying to my God because I knew he would see me through. Either I would be with him in glory and in, with him in heaven, or I would, I would live and he'd have a place for me. They threw me into that pit because I had disobeyed. The evil men were all gleeful, and I went into the pit to the sounds and the roars of those lions. And I knew at any moment that I was going to be chewed and eaten. I heard them growling, but I didn't feel anything. Maybe it's just they're waiting for something. Maybe they're waiting for a little salt, a little pepper. I don't know. But I opened my eyes and I noticed that there was an angelic being there. A brilliant light. An angel of the Lord that had appeared. And you know what was interesting? When I recorded this in my book, I used the word... Hebrew word, malach. You want to say that with me? Malach. Be careful, you'll spit on somebody. And <laughs> you have to wipe off the back of their head. <laughs> Do you know what? That word malach is the same Hebrew word that was used when the other king, King Nebuchadnezzar, looked into the fiery furnace and he saw the fourth man in the fiery furnace. And do you remember what that king said? King Nebuchadnezzar said, that fourth man looks like the son of God. So I used that same word in Daniel chapter 6 because it was the pre-incarnate Christ, I truly believe, that was with me in that lion's den. You see, lions are interesting characters and creatures. They, they, they form a group, and it's called a pride, P-R-I-D-E. And there's always one that is the dominant lion. When he eats, the rest of the lions eat too. When he sleeps, the rest of the lions eat uh, sleep too. When he starts walking about, the rest of the lions... He's the dominant male lion. Yes? Hmm? No? He's called the alpha male. Now, I truly believe that the pre-incarnate Jesus showed up in my den. You don't have to believe that. But the same Hebrew word, the same angelic creature that King Nebuchadnezzar says was the son of God now shows up in my, my lion's den? Or oh, you would have a hard time to convince me that it wasn't Jesus who was throughout Scripture called the lion of the tribe of Judah. The book of Revelation, John says, Revelation 5, 5, do not weep, do not feel sorry for the lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David has overcome. He has triumphed. You'll see other scriptures that refer to Jesus, Messiah Jesus, as the Lion of Judah. I believe that Judah, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, was with me in that pit that day and stopped the other lions because he was the dominant male. He was the alpha male. Isn't he called the Alpha and Omega? Hello? <laughs> and I believe that day that he said, Hey, kitty, kitty, come over here, please. Lay down beside Daniel tonight. Because Daniel needs a warm something to keep him warm. It's cold in this den. And he called to another cat and he said, Hey, hey, come over here. Daniel needs a pillow to lay on, and you've got a beautiful mane. mane. Let him lay on that. And then there was one way in the back. It was always waving its tail. 
And he says, would you, kitty, 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 come up here, please, and, and you lay down and keep that tail going because there's flies down here in this dungeon. Keep the flies off of my servant. You see, that's what Jesus Messiah will do for us. He protects us. He's there with us, in it or without it. For me to live is Jehovah and his love. For me to die is my gain. So I knew God was going to protect me one way or the other. So there I was that night in that lion's pit, that dungeon. And I had my Old Testament pocket Bible. <laughs> and I opened it up. And I began to read because I was reading between the lions. <laughs> Bad joke. Okay. Oh, man. But at least you're awake and you're listening to my story. God showed up. That's what I want you to get. He showed up in, in my situation that I was facing, that I was going through. And I am simply here today, and I've stopped by to simply tell you that no matter what you are going through, the Lion of Judah can be with you as well. The lion's roar is one of the biggest roars in the jungle. They say you can hear it from like four or five miles away. Your writer, the Apostle Peter, says in 2 Peter chapter 2 that your enemy, Satan, walks around as a roaring lion. He is not a lion, but he walks around like one. I truly believe that Jesus, when he died on the cross for your sins, pulled out all the Satan's teeth. All he can do now is gum you. <laughs> Satan should be under our feet. And yet we get all scary and all teary and all oh, Satan's been after me all week long. We are victorious with Jesus. That's why we need Jesus. And if you do not have him in your life today, you need to allow him to come in, forgive you of your sins. He will do that. I don't have to worry about a toothless, clawless lion. Oh, I know the real lions are dangerous. With one paw, that 10 foot or 15 foot long lion, 500 or 600 pounds, can kill a 150 pound gazelle just with one swipe. They're dangerous. But remember the apostle Peter says, your adversary, your enemy walks around like a lion. He's not one. He's defeated. Can you say amen? amen. Hmm? Shalom. Yes. He's defeated. He is no more. But let me tell you, you say, oh, Daniel, I, I still face things. I still go through things in my life. Yes, we will. We will go through tests and trials and tribulations. We will do that to the end of our, our days. But I am here tonight to tell you no matter what you face, the lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus will be there for you. Some of you may be facing financial lions, not actual lions like I did, but you are facing a financial lion. You've lost your job. Or maybe something's happened to your finances. And it seems like there's no way out, and you say, God, what am I going to do? Job. I'm here to tell you, Jesus can be in the midst of your pit. Some of you are facing relational lions, husband or a wife. You may even be here today, and God bless that you are here today. But I am here to tell you that even in that relationship, and even though you put on a good face on Sunday morning, there could be something hampering in your marriage. Get Jesus in the midst of your marriage, amen? Jesus in the midst of your marriage. Do you have Jesus in the midst of your marriage, huh? Yes, does he love you? 
Do you love him? And I hope he's your husband. <laughs> I've got discernment, but I don't have some of that technical discernment. <laughs> Maybe you are in the pit of a physical need that the doctor has just had one thing or, or he's, he's already diagnosed you with an incurable disease or maybe you've got the cancer or perhaps, perhaps you only have a couple, couple months to live. People face that pit, it's very real. Christ followers face those pits. And I don't have all the answers because I'm just a mere Old Testament prophet. I'm a mere man of God, but I am here hopefully to encourage you to look for that, that wonderful advocate from the Father that can come into your pit. You already believe in him, but allow him just to be there to heal you. We heard a testimony last night of a man who had a drug habit. He remembered a incident where he shot up with acid but it was his wife that brought him back to the Lord probably from the pits of hell itself and from despair I'm here to tell you as well don't think that you're going to make it don't think you're going to make it in hell there's weeping and gnashing of teeth in hell hell was made we learned in Sunday school this morning well, we should already know that, that, that hell was made for the devil and all of his angels, not for us. But I hear people all the time, they simply say, oh, Daniel, it doesn't matter. When I die, I'm going to hell. I'll be with the rest of my friends. Shame on you. We should desire to be with God and live forever on a new heaven and a new earth that we can't even begin to comprehend. I don't want to live in hell. I want to live with him who's loved me, created me, who sent his only begotten son to die for me. Don't you? What's wrong with you if you have not accepted his son? And you may not even want to invite me back, and that is fine, but I am here to tell you, you need Jesus if you do not have him. You need Messiah Jesus in your heart and life. You can get upset with the messenger, but let me tell you one day, you will stand before the almighty God and King who loves you. His arms are open for you right now to enter into his mercy and love. Would you be so kind around the room just to stand with me as, as we close out our service here today? Oh, God is so good. His mercy endures forever and ever and ever. I have confidence that he loves us. Would you bow your heads with me, please? If you're here and you do not know Jesus, now is the time to invite him into your life, into your heart. This room is full. And so we're, we're going to make an altar right where we are today, right where you are. Unless you feel you need to step out and come to the front, the altars will be open. But right now, all of us are making an altar where we are. And in a moment, we're going to sing a chorus that he's worthy. Jesus is worthy. He died for our sins. He died for your sins and for my sins. Jehovah Elohim wants to answer your prayer, whatever it is that you're going through, whatever pit you find yourself in. Allow him to do that today, would you? Oh, Lord, you are worthy. Lord, you are worthy. Across this room, let us just pray for a moment. God, you are worthy. Thank you for sending your only begotten son to die on the cross for our sins, to set us free, to place us in the place where you can call us the redeemed of the Lord. I thank you, Lord, for so many in this room that are justified. You look at them as they are just as saved and they are just as pure because we've put our life into your hand. And Lord, as we also heard last night, we're in a process of being sanctified. A process is going forward. Be with us, Lord. 
be with this precious group here today. Oh God, we do not have to be brilliant. We do not have to be an intellectual. We simply need to be faithful, and that's what you call us to. We don't have to have the perfect lives, but we need to be faithful. Oh, because you're worthy. Oh, you're worthy. Can you say that to the Lord this morning, friend? He's worthy. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy. Oh, come right now. In your power and in your might. For you are worthy. If you know this song, we're going to sing it together. If not, the words will be on the screen. But we live in a broken world and you live in a broken culture. But he's worthy. He's worthy. Let's worship him where we are, church. From getting through you. Do you wish that you could see me in all of you? With you. Hallelujah. Is all creation groaning? Oh, we know that all too well that creation is groaning. Ha 
Thank you, church, for allowing me to come. I'll speak as Walter now, okay? Tell just a little bit of Daniel's story. So intriguing how his world so much matches what we're going through. What worked for him will work for us. He, he went to a prayer chamber and Daniel opened up the windows. And you know what that, I believe, me, my opinion, that was just opening up an avenue that he could look across those desert sands, the marauders that would rob the, the caravans that would go across. It was about five or 600 miles from where he was in Babylon to Jerusalem. He would never see his homeland again, ever. Oh, there were others that would be let go and captives and slaves were set free and get back there and rebuild Israel. But he was so concerned about his country, so concerned about the nation. Let me tell you, Babylon rose and was a mighty empire, but it fell. Persia rose and it fell. Guess what? Israel's still on the map. Hello? And just in the last 24 hours, if you've been listening a little bit to the news, our hearts should be, be, be sunk a little bit and, and, and gripped with Iran lobbing bombs toward, toward the people of God. What, what, a, what a vast thing. And I'm not here to talk about revelation or present-day prophecy. That's Pastor Chris. He's, he's excellent at that. But let me tell you, Scripture does tell me I need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And I know you are. I, I know you will. But I just want to encourage you. We're living in some last days. And although it's troubling on one side, on another side, it's exciting simply because, Pastor, we're seeing Scripture come to fruition. This may be our day. We, we may not be here tonight. The rapture might happen. When we were in Bible college, we used to have rapture drills, right? <laughs> you were way ahead of me, sister. I'm telling you, it's going to happen, baby. And all of what we're seeing right in the news is unfolding before our eyes. And I make one last appeal. If you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ, would you get a hold of myself or Pastor Chris, one of some of these men maybe another lady we'll simply pray with you it's a simple prayer but it's more than just accepting him as our savior it's then walking that journey daniel was able to do it because he opened up those windows i believe it was a declaration every time he opened up that window a declaration a prophetic declaration saying lord i'm opening it up because i know for sure that you're going to deliver your people and he's going to do that, church. I've talked way too much. I thank you for this opportunity to visit your church. And you got a great church. Keep going strong. Keep living for him. You've got a great pastor here with a loving heart. Keep his family. They're going through some tests right now. They're going through some trials, taking care of Chris's mom-in-law. You don't know how hard that is at times. Some of you do, perhaps. Keep the unity of the spirit and the bonds of peace I challenge you to do that because I want to see some of you on the other shore one day Pastor Chris, God bless you Would you give up for Pastor Walt Smith today? Just briefly then I'll let you go thank you so much Pastor Walter Smith we have appreciated the theatrical monologue spiritual biblical theatrical monologue we are so grateful for that today 
we are going to receive an offering just to go towards him. And you guys know me well enough. No pressure to give, but I want to give you the opportunity to give as the Holy Spirit would like to give. But I will say this. A few weeks ago, I was looking at Sight and Sound. And I know a number of you have been there. We've had a couple just was there this week. Um, looking at the tickets, they've upped their prices this year. And to get the standard seats where I've sat with my family before, it's now $99 to see the show of Daniel. And that's up to them. That's fine. And I know it's a massive, massive production, beautiful sight. May God continue to bless them. But how many know that the acting you saw here today was not just acting? It was a heartfelt appeal for us to live in a world that is anti-Christ. And, and I want to encourage you, keep living for Christ. We want to support our, mission, our evangelist today, Pastor Walt Smith. If you're writing out a check, you can write it to Greater Valley. Somebody God's going to go one large offering to him. But today, we just want to bless him. And if you could sacrifice, as, as Paul says, I don't seek the gift, but I seek the, seek the fruit that abounds to your account. We want to sacrificially offer a gift to him. And Jay, would you come on up here today? I'm going to ask you to just pray a prayer of blessing upon this offering. And as we uh, just just go ahead and pray, and then I'll just give closing instructions. Oh, Father God, I just thank you for this time that we've had to listen to your word. And uh, with the pastor and his um, his acting and just in his heart for, for the word and for us. And we just uh, thank you for that. I pray that you would bless this offering and um, just bless the giver alike in Jesus' name. Friends, we'll uh, receive an offering of those baskets. So as you step out, just hit one of those baskets. Don't take from the basket. Put in the basket. <laughs> but uh, listen, if you want to write a check to $99, we'd be up for that as well. I'm sure he would as well. But would you turn to somebody and say, thank you for being here today. <laughs> Pastor Walt has a display set up in the lobby, and I encourage you, go visit that display, get to know him, and meet him as Walt Smith or as Daniel. God bless you guys. Thank you for being with us.